Say hello to your new little friend. Hello, I'm Kent, and welcome to Turn a Wood Bowl. Today we're going to talk about a specialty bowl gouge, the micro bevel. Some people also call this a bottom feeder. I like to call it a micro bevel. And the reason being is we have a very steep front bevel and cut back heels that make this really small bevel area right here. And this is a great specialty tool for a couple different reasons. And I'm gonna show you in this video exactly what I'm talking about. Before we get started with the micro bevel, do me a huge favor, click that like button and subscribe if you're not already. I've got tons of great videos and I hope you've been enjoying them and learning tons of great wood bull turning tips. All right, so a micro bevel, why would we use this? Well, this is a great tool to have on hand. It's only gonna get used seldomly but when you need it and it's there for you, oh my goodness, it's the best tool to have around. And let me show you why. First of all, we have a very steep front bevel angle. This is about a 65 degree bevel on this particular gouge, and it can vary. You can make it 60, some people even go as high as 70 degrees on that. And then it has, the heel has been ground back on this so that it's, it's out of the way. We don't have this sharp, heel on the bottom. So that's going to help us for, with a couple different things. We're going to be able to make tight turns with the heel removed and because it has that steep front bevel at 65 degrees, I'm going to be able to reach into a deep bowl like this one, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, and be able to make a nice smooth cut across the bottom without losing bevel contact. Now my traditional my traditional bull gouge that I use frequently is the 55 degree swept back bevel. I like this one a lot. It's very versatile. I can do all four bull gouge cuts with it very easily. And this is my go-to tool. I will use this for the majority of the bowl. However, when it gets down into the bottom of a deep bowl, I will pull out the micro bevel and I will use that. Let me show you on a face cut on this bull blank what happens with the different angles and how they affect the cut. If you've had a chance to see my video on which bowl gouge bevel angle is best, then you'll have an idea of what, what's gonna be happening here. So I'm gonna start off with my traditional 55 degree bowl gouge. And what's happening with this bowl gouge is I, if I make a bevel riding cut, I'm back at a decent angle here. I've got plenty of room and I can, I can make this cut. If I were to do this, that, and again, this is a 55 degree swept back bevel. If I were to make this cut with a 40-40 grind, I'm clear back here and the bull gouge is coming off the bull back in this direction. Now look what happens when I pick up the micro bevel with that 65 degree bevel angle. Look at Look at the tool position in my handle, how it's positioned coming out of the bowl. This is going to give us a great advantage in just a moment when we hollow out this the interior of this bowl. Let me show you these from above so you can see the dramatic angle difference between the three tools. Okay, so we'll start with the most dramatic first. This is the 40-40 gouge. And you can see now, when I'm on bevel with this particular bowl gouge right here, Look at the angle that I'm coming out from away from the face of this bowl. So maybe I get cut here. Okay, now I'm going to go to the 55 degree bowl gouge. Now look, I'm, I'm my, my position of the tool is moving around to the right. Okay, so you can see how it's coming off the face of the, the gouge. And these are about 10 degrees apart. The first, I'm sorry, 15 degrees apart. The first one was a 40, this is a 55. Now I'm gonna go to my 65 degree angle micro bevel. And now I'm on bevel right here. And you can see how, how tight this is coming into the bowl itself. Let me show you this bevel up close. Okay, and if you look at the bevel on this bull gouge, you can see that it's just that top portion. These two other marks that are below that are the heel that has been trimmed back and it's out of the way. So let's take a look at that. When I get on bevel right here, basically I'm gonna rub the heel, then I'm gonna lift the handle, 
just like I teach in the AHBC video. And then I'm going to just gently go across it. Now, having all of this material out of the way is going to help us dramatically when we get on the inside. That's what I'm going to do next. The micro bevel is a specialty bowl gouge. I'm only going to use it at the very bottom of this bowl. And to core out and clean out the interior of this bowl, I'm going to use my larger 55 degree angle swept back bowl gouge. That will take away the bulk of the material, and then I'm going to final cut with my smaller 55 and then finish up the bottom with the micro bevel. So in the meantime, I'm going to fast forward through this so you don't have to watch the whole coring of this, but you get the idea of what I'm doing. Again, 55 degree bevel pull out, clear this out. So the interior, the side walls have been cut, the rim is shaped, the side walls are shaped. I've got this area in the bottom that needs to be removed. Now my 55 degree bevel can get in there pretty well, although it's difficult to line up the tool rest and get decent support from it. Now if I were to be using a, a kind of a traditional grind, fingernail grind here with a 45 degree angle, you can see that as I come around here on bevel, now all of a sudden tool is touching the side rim of the bowl and now I'm going to be off bevel and I'll be pushing that cutting edge across the surface which is going to leave all kinds of nasty tool marks and we don't want that. So this is the perfect situation for the micro bevel. So what I'll be doing is I'll be making the same grain supported passes across the bottom from left to right to the center and I'll just keep working this material down but using the, the micro bevel. The micro bevel will be on bevel about here and is nowhere near touching that the rim of the bowl. So let's take a look at how this cuts. You know, the biggest trick is to take light cuts. Don't try to be making huge, deep cuts and passes on this because we're really using this as a finishing tool that has the ability to reach into the bottom of the bowl. So keep those cuts nice and light. Okay, 
if you can see I'm extending pretty far over the tool rest and I'm applying a lot of down pressure on the tool rest to keep this stable. Right there, that cut was a little bit too deep, so what I'll do is I'll back up and take a little bit shallower cut. And then I'll pick up where I left off there. Now I'm getting to the point where I'm going to pick up where the other cuts from the 55 degree bull gouge left off and I want to merge those together nicely. So I'm going to use the same AHBCs. I'm going to anchor to the tool rest. I'm going to rub the heel so I don't actually accidentally start cutting into the bull. Now I'm going to gently lift the handle just a touch until the cutting edge engages and then I'm going to cut. Anchor, heel, bevel, cut. Now let's take a look at the shape of this. It's, it's pretty good. I, it still needs to come out a little bit more because it's, it needs to be a little bit shallower. This is getting deep, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my curve tool rest, which is going to give me a little bit, a little bit more support closer to the cut. Bring it in here. Make sure that it turns clear, and it does. And I'm going to put the, the tool in here, make sure that it's going to be cutting on center. I can see the center lines right there. So yeah, it looks pretty good. Now what I just need to do is make this a little bit shallower because right now it's relatively flat in there and I want it to, I want it to have a curve that matches the rest of the bolt. So I'm going to start back up here. Now the pace of that cut was a little quick. You can see the little lines in there. That's because I was cutting faster than the bowl was turning. So if I slow down, I'm going to get a nice clean cut. Bull gouge starts bouncing and vibrating like that. It's basically saying that it's trying to catch. It's getting, it's taking on too much wood. So what I did, if you notice, I closed the flute, which reduces the amount of wood it's cutting, and I applied more down pressure to the to the tool rest, which stabilizes the bull gouge. It's feeling pretty good. Let's see, I got a little swirl there. It's still a little high. I'm going to make a couple little shallow passes there and finish this off. It's very close. It's better to have to take a little bit off than to go too far and need to put some back on. That's a lot harder to put some back on. Nice, slow, easy pace. A nice, smooth cut there. And there we have it. This is ready to be sand, sanded and finished, and it's complete. So you might be thinking, well, could, could I have done this with the other tool? Well, honestly, the 55 degree bull gouge is actually very close because it's only 10 degrees off. The trick is, is it has a large, wide bevel. I didn't, don't typically grind the heel up. So what I could do to make this curve is sometimes I'll make a cut that comes around and I'll let that cut get opened up. So essentially, I just have the round front of the bull gouge that is following the curve of the inside of the bull. That is, that'll work, except it's a very dangerous cut. If you, if you get too aggressive and you introduce too much wood, it's going to catch and it's going to cause problems. Um, that's a that's a cut you can do once you get once you get good and you have your micro your micro muscle skills built up with the, the bull gouge you can do that so you start off kind of closed and slowly open it up and then bring it around inside the bull just ever so gently now I'm still on bevel except that wood's coming straight down to the whole front of that bull gouge and again if you get in there too hard you're going to get a catch and then you close it up when you go back to the center it's possible to do it with this tool however the micro bevel is so much easier to get all of that control all at once and make it make it just a really nice smooth cut almost by introducing the tool perpendicular to the base of the bowl it's really simple to get all the way around there even if this bowl is much deeper and the sides came in more i could still reach inside there and make a nice smooth 
cut across the bottom. So another big characteristic of the micro bevel that I haven't pointed out yet is you want a relatively large bowl gouge shaft. This is a 5 8 inch bowl gouge. Now I wouldn't do this with any other bowl gouge that's smaller, like a half inch or even 3 8 because as you saw there, as I was reaching over that tool rest, the farther you go over that tool rest, the more vibration you're potentially going to introduce into the tool, and then it takes the cut off. off path. So instead you want, a, you want a good sturdy tool, one that you can press down into the tool rest and it's going to be good and stable. You're going to be holding on that handle and getting it nice and tight to your body so you get a nice smooth path, path across the bottom of the bull. So let me know what you think of the micro bevel. Are you going to add this to your arsenal of tools? If you are, um, I've got another tip for you my tool sharpening for wood bolt turning e-course online, which there's a link in the description, or you can go to my website, turnwoodbolt.com, and click on courses at the top. You'll be able to shape this bull gouge along with four other bull gouges that you can use on a regular basis. But then this again is a specialty bull gouge. I don't use it that often, but oh, when I need it, it's a fantastic tool to have on hand. And you can see how great it is for making the bottom of the bolt nice and smooth. I know this is an issue for a lot of you guys because I get questions about it all the time. What do I do with the deep bowls? And what do I do in the bottom of the deep bowls? You can use scrapers and things of that nature, but none of them are going to give you a cut as smooth as the micro bevel. So do me a favor. Click that like button if you like this video. Subscribe. Share this with friends. I'm really trying to get this channel out to as many people as possible. So if you've got friends, if you've got a turning club and you know other people, share this video and share my channel with them. I would greatly appreciate that. And please ask them to subscribe as well. So like I always say at the end of my videos, until next time, happy turning.